I got a uh, Craftsman limited edition YS4500 tractor, uh, 22 horsepower Briggs and Stratton in tech. Um, it's a machine I got a few years ago. Never had a chance to really go through it. Um, there's some obvious issues. Um, it's not running well, and I haven't even tried the deck yet. Um, but one of the issues we'll address later is those front tires. Um, obviously, they're completely worn out, bald, and that is because the one is trying to turn left while the other is going straight. Um, why no one ever attempted to repair that before the tires went bald, I have no idea. It's obviously been handling pretty poorly for many, many years. Um, the other things I noticed just on a quick inspection is like the uh, safety guard is all crushed backwards like they ran into something. That just protects the muffler from things that are hot, um, like yourself if you happen to be walking by it or whatever. Um, and also the way it runs right now, um, obviously I've got a jumper pack on there, is a little uneven. And this is very common for anything that's been sitting for any length of time. Let me start it up and give you a listen. Come on, old girl. Anytime you see something that likes to run with the choke mostly on, um, you have a restriction in the carburetor. Usually that's the case. Um, in this case it's been sitting so I don't mind uh, going through it a little bit because most likely there is going to be some crusties in there. But any, any machine that you have to run on, you know, almost full choke just to make it run right, it's a pretty good indication. So we're going to start with uh, pulling the hood off and on this Craftsman pull your headlights off you get the hood about straight up and down and you just pull up comes right out there's just uh, it's just some little little brackets that are going in there uh, this is your headlight bracket headlight wiring if you have headlights on yours um, but what I'm gonna go for is that carburetor bowl right there. I don't know that I'm going to pull the whole carburetor off because this one's a twin cylinder and I have a feeling there would be more difficulty than I'm willing to go for. Um, oftentimes you can take the bowl off, spray up in the fluid jets and get it close enough to clean that it'll run good. Um, if that's the case, that would be the easy way without having to pull you know, your intake manifold which would be that bolt, that bolt, and they're into aluminum, and you don't know if they're going to snap off. So we're going to go for the easiest thing first, just try to pull that bolt off and see what we have in there. If it looks bad, we might have to pull the whole carb. Uh, the first thing I did here was rotate the throttle. That's this cable here. Rotate that to get this plate out of my way as much as possible. Now I'm just going to go for the little electrical connector here. This one's got what they call an anti-backfire valve. It's got a little plunger and it will close off the fuel once you stop. So we need to get that wire out of the way. Good. All right, now there's not a lot of space in here. This needs to come off counterclockwise. Um, there's not a lot of, usually enough space for a regular wrench to get in there and you don't want to turn it by the solenoid portion. Uh, so I'm going to try the old uh, electrical pliers, which are fairly, uh, this is used for like house wires. It's fairly, fairly, uh, fairly thin and it's got a flat spot at the end that can be used as a pliers. Let's see if I can 
maybe crack it off now let me figure out how to get that loose it's kind of rounded a lot of times they have little flats on them on the sides but I don't see them okay I was able to get a half inch ridge in there uh, this one does does have the flats I just couldn't find them at first so we'll just turn that and we're gonna get some fuel dripping out and that's just the bowl draining this one has a fuel pump so after a while they'll stop pretty soon because there's only a little bit in this bowl there it goes now we got it out that'll let the bowl come down there's see that little plunger that's on the end there that's a rubber plunger and that will go up and shut off the fuel so as you're shutting off the engine you're not uh, having it backfire on you see if that bowl will come down sometimes if you just give them a little tap or maybe this one it doesn't come out that way seems very firm I think there might be some fasteners up there I'm missing yes there's something up there let me figure that out is this bowl is held on by two flathead screws up there Hopefully you can see those in the flashlight there, um, which is going to be a little hard to get at because I got no access for even a shorty screwdriver under here. So I'm going to try to take this plate off, that bolt, that bolt, um, try to take this off. With It's got the um, throttle and or choke cable attached to it. Um, I'm going to see what I can do about getting that to come off without uh, having pieces flying everywhere. Okay, got the fasteners out. Take that out of the way. Now, if we're going to take it all the way off, we better remember where those springs go. So if you're doing this, take some pictures, do what you got to do to uh, make sure stuff goes back. Because you're not going to be able to just figure it out by uh, guessing. Pull that out of the way. Now we got enough room down here. To get those screws out on the carb bowl. I'm hoping not to have to take this whole thing off, but looking like they're they're trying to give me the message that that's probably going to happen the way this thing's put together. 
Let me get those screws off and I'll bring you back. Okay, tried to get those screws out. They're not coming out. So to be able to get at everything the way I need to get at everything, I'm probably just going to have to pull that tire carburetor, which means pulling the intake bolt there. 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 Pulling the fuel line and various other fasteners. Okay, so I'm gonna start taking the whole carburetor assembly off. Um, I took off the four thumb screws that are on the air cleaner cover. Took out the air cleaner, took out the one tiny screw there, it's a quarter inch I believe. Now I've gotta take off these which are 5 16 That takes the screen off, allows us to then get at the uh, these which are um, I think 10 millimeter or 3 8 somewhere around there we'll take off six of those three on each side and pull that whole cover right off of there because we have to get at some of our carburetor uh, things including the fuel um, hose and and who knows what else we gotta get in there and get that okay got the top cover off out of the way pulled the uh, fuel line the clip for the line Pull that line back, get that out of the way. Um, now what I gotta do, mm -hmm. this is for the choke right here. Um, I'm gonna take off these two bolts, which are like uh, 7 30 seconds. That way I don't have to loosen my adjustment here for the choke and won't have to readjust anything. I'll just be able to take this bracket, slip it down and away from that uh, piece that stays on the engine. And uh, I think that'll save us some more time when we go to put it back together. Okay, I've got that bracket mm -hmm. out of the way. All I did was just, I'm just gonna leave it dangle over here on the side. And then we'll go for the uh, intake bolts next. It looks like a Torx, but I'm gonna go with a uh, socket type uh, setup because uh, I don't think they're gonna come out very easily. All right, got all four bolts out. Now let's see what else is holding me in. Uh, looks like we got this this link here that goes up to the throttle on the carburetor from the governor. Let's see if we can get that to unhook somehow. And what else is holding me? That's it. All right, we just got that to sneak out. Oh, no, there's still something holding me. Ah, there we go. There's a rubber mm -hmm. tube which is going to be for your PCV system and that needs to come out. What's holding me is this rubber tube for the PCV system. Uh, we can go in here and push that through. There we go. All right, now we got our whole carburetor. Let's go work on that on something flat. Here's the carburetor as we pulled it out. Um, here's the bottom side, of course. Okay, I'm back here for the carburetor for the twin Briggs and uh, I originally was just trying to spray it out and I reassembled it and it, it wasn't right. So I took it completely apart, well almost completely apart, the carburetor uh, and the whole, I took it off the intake manifold assembly, um, took off the little air snorkel and have more than a little hardware and miscellaneous to put back now. So um, I did have to put it in my carburetor, uh, my ultrasonic cleaner with, with carburetor cleaner. Uh, let it sit in there for a couple hours, heat it, use the ultrasonic, and uh, hopefully now it's going to be uh, clean enough because there was a lot of things that I didn't uh, disassemble the first time that I really should have. Um, this carburetor is new to me. Never seen one quite like this before. It's actually a two barrel carburetor. Uh, strangest uh, thing ever. Um, and not even all of these on the Briggs are the same. For example, I saw a guy uh, do one on a 18 horse or something like that, 17 and a half, whatever it was. 
and it was completely different. Uh, this piece here was not the same. Uh, the little, I don't know if you call it the main jet or whatever, whatever you call that on this one, um, wasn't the same and uh, just several differences. So uh, instead of doing the disassembly, which I did rather quickly, I'll show you the reassembly, uh, the process I took to get it apart. The only thing I wasn't too happy about is the gasket that's inside there. When I used uh, my carburetor cleaner, it looks to got have gotten a little rubbery and expanded. I'm not sure if that's going to go back the way the way it needs to, but I'm going to hope it does. I'm looking for an individual screw that was into this plastic. Probably was one of these. There probably w there was only three of these. I think. Are they any different than the other? I don't think so. Then this rod, this rattle rod goes in the side. And by the way, this, this carburetor is made by Nikkei, N-I-K-K-I. -K -K um, it's marked left and right. It's got the Briggs logo on there. And where else did I see the numbers? Here. There's some numbers on there I can barely read. Six. I don't know. Can't read it. But anyway, that's the part number for mine. Put that back in there. The only thing that holds this is going to be the plates. Um. There's little screws and it'll hold that. I just have to figure out which way it was. I do have pictures if necessary. Usually you can look at things like this. And you can find witness marks. For example, on mine, I'm trying to get in the viewfinder here. You can see the line where the bar was. So the bar was on that side. The other side, you don't have anything. So just look for witness marks. And that is supposed to sit at just an angle of whatever that rod likes to be at. Then you got the tiniest screws ever. If you lose those, you're not going to find that in your hardware box. And of course, they're just about impossible to get started. Try with the hand driver. See if I can get them lined up. Yes.
You want to get those pretty tight because if they fall out, they're going to get sucked into your engine and you probably ruin it. And then just make sure it opens and closes like it should. And this one's fine. Okay, now let's go down to these little tubes. Emulsion tubes, whatever they are. Where's the little screws for that one? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Not looking good, folks. There they are. You got your carb needle. Put that in the little slot. Let it dangle. Try to get it in there. There we go. Put your hip hinge pin. If it doesn't go one way, go in the other. I think sometimes they stick one side or the other. Actually that one I can see is sticked. This doesn't really have, it's got a hole only on one side, but it doesn't really have a place where it locks in, so I'm guessing it's not really that critical. Actually, it's got holes on both sides, so what, what's the difference? Put it this way, that way, whatever. Put the bowl back on. All right, let's put this solenoid back on. Make sure you get your tip on there. Didn't fall off while you were working. Up. That gasket's still fine. Okay, pretty much complete. This gasket is still reusable, no problems. This gasket I took off because it looked like it wanted to come off easy, so I did. We'll just put that right back on. There's nothing wrong with reusing a gasket. It's still supple, and uh, you're only, you know, filling up, filling up the space. Uh, if you had any question, you could just put some gasket sealer on there. Some people always put new gaskets. Um, I'm not going to wait a week or two, whatever it'll be right now, to get something, so uh, they're, they're fine to use. Alright, now it's just a matter of fix, figuring out which side what went on to what. This was out. So the intake would have been here. How was that? Should go like this. Nope. 
figure it out. Get right back. Alright, figured out which way it goes. This I don't think can go on upside down. It, well, I mean, it matters which way, but I don't think it can go on upside down because this little notch is cut out for this adjuster screw. I don't think it is on the other side. This one was the only one out of all of them that ended up stripping out on me, the Torx. So, it is what it is. Put them all down about hand loose and then I'll tighten them up with the mini impact. And then this one I'll have to get on there with a pair of vice grips, or you could put two nuts together and twist it that way. Forgot what size that was supposed to be. Like that one. Four millimeter feels pretty good. This one's the one that's stripped. No sense even trying. Double check these. Should be good. Also, I noticed when I put this back, it was facing the opposite way. It's probably not good to twist them like that. I assume we're twisting wires in there or something. But I did. Okay, now we've got to get this back on. And it looks to me like this one might have been threaded and these other ones weren't. Or are they just hogged out? I have no idea why that one would be different than the rest, but it definitely. Well, okay, that's when he does slip on. That's like seven sixteenths, I think. Yep. Then I've just got to put both of these rods on, and I took pictures before I took it off. 
of exactly how they go. So I got to refer to those and then this assembly is ready to reinstall. Okay, got everything back. Got both of the levers back in the same way. You always want to fish them exactly how the factory had them or else it just won't work. Especially for the governor one. Uh, make sure, you know, if it came from the inside, go to the inside. Um, backwards isn't going to work. It's, it's made a very specific way. So I'll just get ready to install this back on the machine. Alright, back here at the tractor that this came off of. I'm going to use some quick gasket sealant to... These have a rubber ring installed on them from the factory. And I probably should get another one, but I don't have one. So I'm going to put this on there for a quick little insurance that we got a proper seal. And I'm putting quite a bit because this can go into that inner ring also not just the outer ring. Normally I wouldn't put near that much because it would just squish into the engine or into the intake manifold and slow down the flow. Then we got to get our little I just put my finger right in it. We've got to get our rods hooked up, the ones that go for the throttle and choke. Got that one. We'll get the other one afterwards. I believe that one goes over top. No, it probably goes underneath. Hopefully I did that right. Smush that on there a little bit while I grab the bolts. And I can't reach them from where I am. Hook up the gas line, fuel line, in this case gas. Hook back in the solenoid, anti-backfire solenoid, whatever you want to call it. Good. That's free to move, no binding. We've got the other one sticking out here, which I think is right. We'll know in a minute. Something here. is not right. And that's going to suck if it's wrong because I'm going to have to take it completely back off.
This one goes here. How could that? No. Something's wrong. I'm a quarter inch, half inch off, and I don't have free room here. I think I got this one in reversed. Wouldn't that be the same? I don't know. Bring it back. Okay, that was an interesting one. Uh, when I was reassembling the carburetor, the carburetor, the piece that the flapper goes on for the choke, can be angled this way a little bit and work, and be angled this way a little bit and work. I had it the wrong way. I had to take apart the whole carburetor, put that back the other way, then everything lines up so it's how it should now for the choke. It's acting in the right direction when you pull. It's closing the choke. So that was a problem the whole time. I had to take the carburetor off once or twice to figure that out. Um, got all the linkages hooked back up. This one's for the throttle. This one's for the choke. Got the solenoid plugged back in. So I think we could give it a quick start. We don't want to run it too long because we don't have the motor shroud on and without the motor shroud it won't get the proper cooling um, it won't be able to use the fan so we just want to run it for a little bit just to make sure we got everything put back together um, it'll probably take a minute to fire up because the carburetor bowl and everything has been completely drained so it'll have to pump some new fuel up um, with the fuel pump fill that bowl then it'll probably fire Okay, I've got a little booster pack set up. Um, there's a link to that just in the description below the video. And uh, that saves you from buying a lot of batteries because usually once they get going, um, they'll charge themselves. But sometimes they just need a little help. It doesn't always need a new battery. As you can see, we've come a long ways from where we started, where we couldn't even get the, uh, the idle smooth, and uh, at full speed it still had to have the choke out. Now, as you can see, when I had the throttle at maximum, when I was pulling this out, it started choking too much. That means we're getting too much gas, whereas before we had to have that just to get enough gas. So now it's running how it should. We should have way more power and uh, I'm just going to button up the covers and give it one last uh, check.
Alright, I'll just give it one more start just to make sure nothing's going to rub. Make sure we got everything where it needs to be. And we'll call this one good. So that's how we got the uh, Craftsman, which is a Briggs and Stratton 22 horse overhead valve engine Intec twin cylinder running like a new machine. Just took a little little labor. Only parts I used was some gasket sealer and some carburetor cleaner, and it's ready to run. If you liked this video, if you learned anything, or if you'd like to see some more like it on similar subjects drop me a comment down below if you have any requests about what you might like to see also comment below and uh, check out my Amazon links down down in the video description I have several video se several links available products I use I like stuff I recommend not just stuff that's you know randomly picked it's actually stuff I, I like and use and uh, maybe you can try it out for yourself Thanks for watching. Okay, anytime I like to work on something, check everything when you're done. Make sure you didn't get this thing so it's rubbing on there. Make sure you got all this sold the way down. Just give it a double check real quick, look it over, and then give it another test run. Sounds good. Uh, as you can see, we've come a long ways from where the where we started. Uh, still got a ways to go on this tractor. Uh, that front tire is obviously going flat, and they're misaligned. When you got it pointing straight, they're both towed out quite a bit, and uh, both of the tires are pretty much ruined. Haven't tried the deck yet. Looks like we got some bending going on there. Looks like a plastic bag stuck in there. I don't know what that's going on. Um, so we have to do some straightening on that and maybe actually that front part looks like it's kind of missing in some of there so we'll see what we can do about strengthening that back up because obviously it's pretty much useless like that I'm sure it's probably hitting the blade or close to it as it is that's pretty caved in obviously they've run into something so we'll see what we can do about that maybe straighten out these flanges check the belts the bearings in a future video if you like this one, if you learned something, if it was something good to take your time for the day, keep your mind off the coronavirus, whatever's going on. Uh, give me, give me a like, give me a share, subscribe to the channel, and if you need any of the tools that I was using, um, I was using the Genius Boost Pack from. NOCO and carburetor cleaner kit, carburetor dip. That stuff's all on the Amazon links down below. Um, I'm going to try to add some more things that I really use a lot. Um, thanks for watching.